yeah, for very illuminating um, and image packed and entertaining uh, lecture that illuminate the blind box or black box of Hollywood. <laughs> um, so we have about um, 15 to 20 minutes for questions, and I will ask you to uh, go to the microphone there and identify yourself and uh, or comments. Yeah. My name is Doris Baltusha, and I read in the New York Times magazine that uh, Hollywood is thinking about the simultaneous release. I was wondering if you could comment on that. So rather than uh, releasing a film and then a DVD three months later, there's been talk about doing everything all at once, like releasing the film, the DVD, the VHS, and, and the video games as well. Yeah, I, it, it remains to be seen if they're really serious about that because one market leads to the other market leads to the other market leads to the other market. One of the things that they've done, they have done though, you'll note that now they are releasing films internationally at the same time. They used to hesitate, wait for what, you know, six months or even more. Now they're releasing it all over the world at the same time because piracy. Right to avoid pirates. So that certainly happened, but I'm not so sure that, um, at least in the near future, that they would move to simultaneous release in all those markets, because then that you know, undermines the market and the structure that serves them very well, I think. It could have been a response to, to the low box office revenues this year that sort of thinking went, okay, how can we generate as much money as possible? Yeah. You know, this yeah. yeah. I would still say, though, again, even though the box office last year was mm, slightly low, that, and maybe the uh, home video was mm, not as large as they wanted it to be, still they're doing very well because of all of the other markets. I mean, they're doing okay. Hi, my name is Jennifer Goffier, and um, since you brought this topic up in your talk, and you uh, mentioned it also in how Hollywood works, I just wanted to ask you a question about research. And, um, you know, some tips that you have for other scholars who are working on these um, topics, and um, also for you as a scholar, has it gotten easier or harder to get this research the more notorious you've gotten for your work? You have problems with getting the oh, right, right, right. I think that was yeah. yeah. um, No, it's as many of you who do research in, in the room know that it is somewhat difficult to find good, hard facts, data, reliable information on Hollywood. But you know, it's you have to dig, and there's a, a, there are sources that come from the industry. You just have to treat it very carefully. Um, I think also there's a, there's, there are sources that are untapped that we could really be using, um, like archives, and some of the studios actually have uh, donated papers to libraries, to other kinds of archives, where uh, it, you know, it may be historical work to some extent, but still there are, um, there are primary documents that are out there that are, I think, just waiting to be uh, uh, analyzed. Uh, that provide us with some really interesting uh, insights into uh, production, distribution, and so forth. It's some of it is very tedious work, though, and it's it, especially the economic stuff that you know is it's not that exciting, but it, it still is is so important. Uh, in other words, I think that, that we still need to be looking around to see what sources are there. Um, I don't know, others in the room have done work on the industry, and I think in some ways, possibly, it's a little bit easier these days because there's a lot of attention to Hollywood as a business, there's a lot of uh, coverage of it. Uh, but then again, a lot of the coverage is like this, which is you know fluff and promotion and so forth. Uh, but still, uh, you know, there are sources that can be found. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. I think study history is the answer. That's kind of the stage. Thank you for your presentation, Dana. My name is David Newman. 
Um, I was wondering if you could comment a bit more on how the studios actually mitigate the risk at the investment end. You talked about the various revenues, but you know, King Kong, for instance, had um, New Zealand government money in there with a large budget sort of production ground. Peter Jackson put in some money himself. I'm not sure if you know at all about what's, if there are any other financial structures that they use to actually reduce the amount of upfront investment that they needed to make. Yeah, if I understood you, for some reason, I'm, I'm not hearing that microphone very well, but your question was about uh, where production financing is coming the, the, from? The, uh, the investing, so that the studios aren't actually doing the upfront right. money that it's right. other right. investors right. actually right. take that risk. Yeah. Uh, what I tried to outline were the various kinds of deals that represent, in some ways, uh, the type of funding. So there are the in-house productions that the, the majors do put money into. Uh, the, the, then there are the production companies that are somewhat related to the distribution companies. Sometimes they get a little bit of money. But they get money in lots of different places, including some of these equity deals that I mentioned. And that's, uh, it's, it's big in, in Hollywood, especially now, it seems that they're getting money from these various funds, hedge funds and other kinds of um, arrangements. Um, there are still arrangements they have with commercial banks. Uh, although you can't really get a loan based on a film, you could certainly get funds if you have some other kind of collateral. Um, and then they're also, uh, as represented by the hedge fund folks who put money into a fund, uh, there are independent or individual investors that always uh, are excited about investing in a Hollywood film. The other thing is people in Hollywood do make a lot of money sometimes to put it back into film. All right, Peter Jackson investing money that he's made back into his own film. Uh, so it comes from, again, a variety of sources. Maybe we can just follow on. Germany has been, until very recently, a major investor. About 20% of the budgets have actually come from German media funds. That's this um, stock. Do you think that's going to make any real difference in, to Hollywood? It comes and it goes. Uh, for a while, the German television companies would almost automatically provide some funds if you arrange to have your film ultimately on, on one of those networks. So there'd be uh, those kinds of um, pre-distribution deals that were made. And so they come and they go. You know? um, that will disappear, somebody else will come up that'll replace it. So I, I don't know specifically how much right now that's going to financing. Uh, I had a question, a couple of questions. One is, it seems to me just anecdotally that the actual demographics of Hollywood movie going have changed over the last, since Scott Smith's time. I wonder if you have any comments on that. And secondly, you present Hollywood as a fairly monolithic entity, and indeed, of course, it is. But I'm also thinking if the ratio between the Hollywood penetration of the domestic North American market in relationship to the foreign films or the independent films has shifted in those 20 odd years since Dallas's work. Because it seems to me that it has with the mini theaters and all this kind of stuff. So I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts on those two issues. I guess since um, Dallas gave that talk, when was it in 80? 80, we just were starting to get uh, video. And I think that's had a huge impact uh, on things that, you know, that, um, that probably couldn't have been person at the time. Um, the audience is probable, some of you might need to help me here, that the, the youth audience started to become more important around that time, and certainly has become more and more important. Um, and, let's see, um, parts of your question, I can't remember. Well, the other part was the, the ratio between the Hollywood uh, yeah, market yeah. versus independence and foreign films. Yeah, uh, and there's always been this problem of foreign films getting into the U.S. market, and I, um, it, 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 
It's a very interesting question of how that happens, why that happens. Um, there are a lot of uh, excuses given that, oh, US audiences aren't interested in foreign films and won't see them, but do they, can they even get into US markets, the US market? Well, and, especially since Canadian films themselves are probably considered foreign films in that context. Yeah, in, in that sense they are, even though the Canadian market is part of the US, right? So that's the argument. Right, right, right. right. But, you might say that certainly video has helped with the distribution of independent and in foreign films. And of course, it's not impossible. In fact, it's often the case that uh, foreign films will do very, very well and be distributed in, in theaters. Uh, and then the independent film, the successful independent films are, are there as well. It's just that. What dominates the market are those that are um, uh, not made by independents and not foreign films. Uh, the ones that are dominant in the market are those that are made by one of the majors that we talked about. Um, there's always, you know, the, there's always the, the case of, well, what's the more recent one? I'm thinking Blair Witch Project. You know, where'd that come from? Very successful, right? No one tries to imitate it. And then another one comes along. But what dominates year after year are those big films, typically, and the films that are aimed at a certain, at a certain audience. I don't know if that, that answers. Uh, my name is Chris Young from the University of Zurich. I have a question about the <coughs> so called independence. Tomorrow, our Academy Awards and Focus Feature is uh, one of them. Uh, when I read, I read an article in USA Today praising this new company, which I think belongs to Universal. Um, how independent are those so-called yeah. independents? Yeah, 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 exactly. If they're owned by one of the major companies, I would say they're not independent. Um, certainly there are some really, truly independent films, and actually one of the major films, isn't it, by Lionsgate, is been nominated for Best Film, and Lionsgate truly is an independent. Um, so, you know, there you have it. Uh, but one certainly needs to be careful to look at some of the, the labels that are, are now, um, uh, most of the studios have uh, labels that are called independent, but actually they're part of the larger company. Uh, so they're dependent independents, I suppose. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and it's not to say that independent films aren't part of Hollywood, they're part of the whole system, they're there, but it's just to look at the way the whole system works, they're kind of integrated into a system that is dominated by the majors. I, I also should have thought of about being so gloomy, gloomy and doomy. You know, it's all impossible. Uh, it's not necessarily the case that these companies can continue. Maybe things can change. Well, I should have some hope. In, in that context, I have a question uh, maybe by your comment. In the context of globalization, and so Hollywood's profitability, in, for example, um, uh, it is uh, recently, um, for example, Hollywood has incorporated more foreign productions, like the Chinese film Hero. So to what extent that is going to challenge Hollywood or is going to enhance the probability of Hollywood? Yeah, I think there are a lot of challenges out there for Hollywood and they have to do with lots of things. Technology, uh, piracy, uh, other film countries. Being, I think Bollywood is really challenging Hollywood. I think the European um, situation is challenging it as well. So yeah. Uh, there are, there are, it's not inevitable, right? And there are challenges out there. Well, uh, somebody's waiting there and we are oh. at 9 o'clock, but I will allow that question and then we can't wait to go to this reception, which I think is ready already by 8.30. So, so we um, get rewarded <laughs> for that. Yeah. Let me put I have Mark Gallagher. Hey, Jan. Um, Hi, Mark. Yeah. Um, and my question is about globalization as well. I mean, you talked about the growth of um, of foreign revenue 
And you didn't really use, this isn't really a talk about content, and you weren't really worked in the media and materialism thesis too much, that's cool. Um, but I did want to ask, uh, and I think it was, I mean, me and this point, uh, I remember being on a panel with her about like eight years ago, um, that, uh, that Hollywood studios, in their attentiveness to foreign markets, uh, were targeting content as well, for example, putting in Cezura, putting in pauses, in films, for let's say, the Japanese market, where that kind of thing would be expected in film content. Do you know to what extent that goes on? And I mean, I, at some level, I think, how is the industry smart enough to be able to recognize this and be there on set being, wait, no, no, in Thailand, this won't play. Um, but I am curious to know uh, if you have any sense of how that goes on, and really the basic ultimate question of like, how does Hollywood deal with these disparate global markets? Do we have these ultimately bland, very universal films um, that are able to target that? Well, that's one response, is there are bland universal films that you know play everywhere, there's not very much dialogue, and it's, you know, it's action, action, and all of that. That's, that's one response. But also, some people are very clever. You know, obviously, not saying, you know, uh, they're not, and I think they are able to think about adapting to different markets. But it's very challenging and difficult, and I think sometimes they don't succeed. Uh, but also, looking at the way that foreign film markets have developed, um, and again, it sounds so um, mm, uh, controlled, but Hollywood has been able to, the American film industry has been so successful in foreign markets that they have the deals with theaters, with even um, other companies, um, film companies in other countries. They historically have been able to dominate those markets to where American films are playing in it. And, and they may not be as sensitive, in fact, probably a lot of times they aren't sensitive to individual cultures. Is that Sense. But then there's also the possibility of making certain changes when it comes into a country. I don't know, I don't think I'm doing a very good job at all of answering this, but I think it's a really interesting and important issue. I wish someone would study this about the way that films are being adapted for, for international markets. And I think there's, there's different techniques and strategies being used. Hi, my name is Senator Tui of Infinite Entertainment. The way I understand it is they actually shoot the restricted stuff for the foreign markets like Japan and whatnot and have higher levels of violence Sometimes. and then actually edit it out for certain markets. Sometimes. Thank you very much. And uh, please join me again. Thanks. <laughs> As a way of express our gratitude, a little gift, actually um, three CDs, uh, two of the Hollywood lectures of Dallas Mice, plus uh, another kind of access of lectures by our as few uh, previous colleagues or existing ones, including um, Bill Lee's and many others. And it's made by Barry, and actually it's really, I feel, you know, it's like his gift for you, and then there's a little thing. And if you would like to buy it, we have choices of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, thank you very much. And please join us for the reception um, in the gallery just outside the school.